Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a multi-day severe weather outbreak, and then next week, things really start to look active. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. First of all, thank you so much. We hit 60,000 followers uh, last night. I greatly appreciate it. I know your time is valuable and I greatly appreciate each and every one of you that takes the time out of your day to listen uh, to what, what I have to say about the weather. I know, you know, I do my best. My job here is to protect life and property and to give you plenty of advanced warning so you can protect yourself ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. We've got a lot to talk about, guys. Uh, first of all, we still have record cold temperatures. We had that record cold dipping all the way down. And for the third week of April, those record lows extend it all the way to the East Coast now. Uh, or everywhere in blue was a record for much of the Carolinas going into Virginia, even into Pennsylvania saw some records uh, this morning, but things have turned around in a big way as the atmosphere has done a total flip. And now we're talking severe weather, just literally a day and a half later. And it really starts to get cranking uh, later on today. This is the newest update from the Storm Prediction Center as of 8 a.m. So let me kind of break this down for you. Uh, so they have an enhanced risk, which is upgraded from uh, last night for Oklahoma City, getting into Baton, Baton Rouge, uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, going into Lafayette, as well as uh, Norman, Oklahoma. It's mainly in East Texas. Uh, ele elevated threat and then we have a secondary elevated threat up here along the cold front up here in Oklahoma City uh, going into Wichita Falls but this whole area is under the gun for even down to Houston to Dallas to Austin to Fort Worth I mean New Orleans this is a big spread coming off the dry line uh, it's starting just in a few hours now and we'll go over all the details uh, so here's your hail threat too. So they actually have an, a hatched risk and it's been pushed back a little bit further out into West Texas as these things really start to explode uh, by 11, 12 o'clock out here in West Texas. And they have a hatched risk, which basically means these some of these storms, some of these hail producers within this hatched risk could be up to two inches in diameter hail. So that would do some serious damage uh, to your vehicle and to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Austin, uh, Fort Worth, uh, Oklahoma City, as well as getting into Arlington, and even down to Houston, uh, Austin, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, all these areas in the yellow here are under that hail threat. All the areas in the dotted shaded are under that more significant hail threat. Some of those could be larger hailstones starting off in Abilene as we go through the day and extending all the way down into uh, uh, San Antonio. Uh, here's your tornado threat. It looks a little bit more, uh, have a lot more torque in the atmosphere, a little bit more rotation as you get into southeast of the Dallas Worth area into East Texas. And that will extend into uh, Lufkin going into Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, Alexander, uh, those areas into Wichita Falls, Lawton, Oklahoma. There's actually a second risk up here by the uh, you know where that cold front's going to lie uh, later on today, and then everywhere in green is still under the gun where they could see some uh, isolated tornadoes within this sector. The brown shaded areas are the ones that a little bit have a little bit higher risk of seeing a, a, a tornado later on the day. So let me kind of walk you through and how all this is going to play out. This is just at 11 a.m. So I'm recording this video at eight. So we're just in the next three hours. Uh, we're talking. We could be looking at storms. There's no cap. There is no cap in the Dallas Fort Worth area in Texas. So these things are going to have really ample opportunity to explode off the dry line. Here, here's what uh, the radar could look like by 11 o'clock a.m. as these storms fire off in West Texas and they start to really start to get cranking into uh, Austin and they start lifting uh, into uh, further into Dallas. It, 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 it things uh, start to really start to get cranking by uh, three o'clock. This is three o'clock in the afternoon. We're talking widespread, uh, severe weather. All three modes are under the gun for uh, Dallas getting into Austin, extending down into San Antonio. Things to, to get, start to get really active into uh, East Texas, where they have a little bit more of uh, a uh, 
of a uh, you know a tornado threat like we talked about and these will extend going into uh down into the houston area into uh, east texas this is by three o'clock and then by by six o'clock these things start to really start to uh, get uh, even more active off uh, where that tornado threat will be a little bit more prevalent uh, going into Shreveport. That'll extend into uh, all northern portions of Louisiana, southern Arkansas by then. And then we have a secondary threat off that cold front. This is by six o'clock uh, this evening that uh, we could be looking at, again, la large hail, damaging winds, and that isolated tornado threat off into uh, getting into Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, as these will extend and traverse down and move southeastward uh, and into the overnight hours. Uh, this is what the radar could potentially look like by midnight tonight. You see this linear band forming into uh, Oklahoma City area. This will try to back build into the Dallas Fort Worth area. It's questionable how far it actually gets. This is mainly going to be probably a northeast Texas event going into the overnight, and this will extend into, uh, you know, move eastward into uh, Oklahoma going into Arkansas here. But these could be some nasty sales too as well as these continue moving across uh, into the overnight hour. So it's two rounds. You have that first initial round that's going to be moving through uh, Arkansas, going into Mississippi, extending to Alabama. These are quick movers. I mean, these things are moving 40, 50 miles an hour. So there's going to be taking up a lot of real estate in a short amount of time as these will continue moving across. Let me expand the view as we go into the overnight hours. Look how fast these things move. These things are flying across uh, down here. This will be all the way into, uh, uh, you know, going into Alabama. Alabama now this will be in, into Georgia into the overnight hours uh, tonight extending into uh, your portions of North Carolina already getting into Tennessee there's that second theory threat along that cold front Go, that'll be over uh, Arkansas going into Missouri as well as uh, Illinois uh, by then and then as these things continue moving across this is your Saturday threat that have a, a slight risk of severe weather into portions of Atlanta, Georgia, going into Birmingham, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, Mobile, as well as uh, Columbus, Georgia. So all these areas are going to be under the gun, again, for all three modes of severe weather. This will extend into Memphis, as well as uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, all up, all up the East Coast. Let me kind of break this this threat down for you as well. They have an enhanced risk of of large hail of two inch diameter that could be potential within this sector into the Birmingham, Alabama area, uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, going into Hoover, uh, Hattiesburg, as well as uh, Meridian, Mississippi. So these areas are going to be a little bit higher risk of seeing those larger hailstones uh, within the yellow shaded area that you'll still see uh, in Birmingham, Montgomery, going into Columbus, maybe Macon, Georgia, Tulux Tuscaloosa, Alabama. These all all these areas in the yellow shaded area will still see those larger hailstones. It's just a little bit, uh, maybe the one inch diameter hail instead of the nasty two inch plus diameters type stuff. And then as the, there's still a hail threat any, anywhere from uh, Jackson, Jackson, Florida, the Panhandle, Florida, going up into the Carolinas, as well as uh, into uh, Georgia here. So all these areas will be under the gun for those larger hail uh, let's break down the tornado threat as where they'll they'll have a little bit more linear band, more a little bit more torque in the atmosphere into uh, Montgomery, going into Columbus, uh, Albany, uh, Georgia here, you know Auburn, uh, Auburn, Al Alabama, going in you know these areas in brown are going to be a little bit low, a little bit elevated risk for that tornado threat. Anywhere in green, we'll still see. Uh, uh, possibly a tornado within this sector. It just maybe not the probability is not as high as the as what's in the uh, the brown uh, shaded area. You can see the radar as we go into uh, Saturday. This would be noon time by Saturday, so you can see how fast these things just fly across the southeast. These will all the way be into Georgia by then. These will be in the Carolinas. These could be some nasty nasty uh, storms into the into South Carolina. Uh, on uh, by noon on Saturday, and this will extend into uh, North Carolina as we extend further northward. They're 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 a little bit less severe. You still have that cold air. I mean, remember we're remember we're going from like 20, 20 degree dew points, you know, record cold temperatures, and we're talking severe weather. Literally just a day and a half later, so the atmosphere really has to turn itself over in a quick way 
even to make this thing even manageable to, for it to happen. So that's what's actually going on here is the atmosphere is just flipping itself at a total total 360 as, as these things uh, really start to get cranky and the dew points start to elevate and it taps into that Gulf moisture. You know, as we go into the overnight on uh, Saturday, these storms will start to really start to elevate on the back end from that cold front. And, and these could be isolated supercells as well into uh, Alabama going into Georgia. So you still could be looking at some, some nasty storms. And this will finally fishtail down into the Florida Panhandle where they could be looking at some nasty storms by then going into the overnight hours on Saturday into the wee hours of the of the night. So let me let me look at the look at the temperatures by Monday. So we have that secondary threat. I mean, this is going to be you know after after these storms pass, these the the the, the winds turn around and then the, from the south and we really elevate. I mean, the temperature is almost skyrocket. We're talking 90s in much of Texas, 80s in Oklahoma, get into the Kansas. This this warm sector extends all the way into Nebraska, going to Iowa I, Iowa here. You know, all along the southeast coast, 80s, widespread 80s extending all the way into the Ohio Valley. So that's going to be a lot of warm air to deal with. We've got some very cold air back behind it with the developing trough. This will be setting up for next week. This is Monday's high temperatures. Look at the 50s out here in the west. We're talking some very cold air that's going to be clashing with this uh, temp temperature gradient. Here's the trough. I mean, look at the 500 millibar going into uh, Monday, what it would look like. There's your warm sector at ahead of it. And we've got that developing trough. That's will extend all the way down into uh, California, going into Arizona of all places with some rain and some cooler air. We're talking Vegas. We're talking Phoenix maybe in the 70s, if not dipping down in the 60s at times during the day, coming up on uh, Monday, going into Tuesday. So man, that's very chilly stuff uh, for that region. Here's what the surface map uh, would look like by Monday. Like I mentioned, we've got some cold air to deal with. So that snow will be flying again into the higher elevations where they have that much needed rain that's gonna be coming back off the West Coast and then even dipping down going into uh, Southern California as well. And that will actually extend into the desert Southwest. Yes, cold air and rain coming for you guys in Phoenix. So yeah, be looking forward to that. But look at the water vapor imagery by the time we get into Monday. So this really depicts on how this is all gonna play out. The winds turn around from the Southwest. That's a very warm wind and moisture levels continue to crank up. They'll be highly elevated, a big difference. I mean, they'll be warm for four or five days by then. So now these dew points will be easily into the low 70s and it's got ample amount of uh, heat uh, to tap into as this dry line really starts to get cranking out here. There's your trough bringing that much needed rain into Southern California, going into the desert Southwest. Snow flies in, into the higher elevations as we've got that deep warm sector out ahead of it. And that very warm air mass goes into Monday. And by Tuesday, going into Tuesday night, Man, the dry line looks to explode out here into West Texas. We could be looking at a large scale supercell outbreak uh, by then off the dry line as that all that fuel to tap into. So we could be looking at all three modes of severe weather by the time we get into Tuesday and next week into West Texas, into Oklahoma, going into Kansas. And like I mentioned, these temperatures will extend all the way higher, you know, further up, further north. So the severe threat could even extend as we go into Iowa, even in portions of Wisconsin, we're talking uh, severe weather uh, possibly by then. Even the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted a, uh, a, a slight risk for that severe weather, and that extends all the way into West Texas, getting down to Fort, Fort Stockton, much of the Dallas Fort Worth area. So you basically get hit again uh, with this, with the with the event coming up, you know, for the next two days for for this uh, the southeast. We, this could be even be basically almost a larger threat 
for next week. So man, you're, there's no relief coming from, we're getting into the peak of severe weather season as well. And unfortunately, this actually comes on the 10 year anniversary of that large super outbreak, tornado outbreak back in uh, 2011. So I know a lot of you guys remember that one because that did a lot of serious damage and that was an historic day. And so hopefully this does not get that bad. Things looked really active for next week and we'll, we'll go into the details here. So yeah, we could be looking at Oklahoma going into Kansas for that severe threat but look at the vorticity index. Look at the jet stream as it really starts to get cranking by the time we go into Wednesday. It dips all the way down into West Texas and lifts upward into Oklahoma, Kansas, going into uh, Missouri, going into Iowa. This will continue uh, swinging across and really start to develop as it swings into the Southeast. Like, I mean, this could be a large scale event. I mean, this could be a, a big super outbreak uh, coming up for next week as this jet really starts to dip all the way down and then, then then that updrafts could be serious i mean look at the chart here i mean all these blues that's some extreme updrafts coming up on the back side tapping into that gulf moisture elevated dew point so yeah we could be looking at a, a, as a significant severe weather outbreak as we go into early next week this is by thursday look at it look at the torque i mean almost dipping all the way down into the southeast and lifting up and what those warm temperatures yeah th that, that those severe threat could extend all the way up into you know wisconsin going into even portions of michigan by then is not out of the question as this as this jet stream really starts to dip and this will just extend into friday so this could be a tuesday wednesday thursday friday event large scale going across the nation here and by Friday, we could be looking at supercell thunderstorms getting into the Carolinas uh, again, going into Florida, you know, this again with some extreme updraft. So here's your precipitation over the next uh, week. We'll take you through all the way through the end of April. And basically that's where, you know, the, the, where it's, the dry line looks to explode in West Texas, going into Central Texas and really starts to get cranking and elevate there's where the, you see the heavier precipitation that could be where your large scale severe weather outbreak could be but yeah it goes all the way into illinois going into wisconsin extended all the way down in the southeast going up into the carolinas and then on the back side you've got that cold sector with rain coming back in from the west coast and that traverses downward into northern california get some much needed rain back into portions of Southern California. And even in the desert Southwest, we'll, we'll be looking at some much needed rain. Uh, they take anything they can get out there because it's been very dry. And much of this is actually going to be snow into the higher elevations as it has that, you know, plenty of uh, moisture to deal with and that colder air uh, to tap into as well. So man, it's going to be a, a very busy week for the next, uh, you know, week uh, into much of the United States. So you've got all three modes to deal with over the next uh, two days with that Friday, Saturday event. So have your NOAA weather radios handy. Listen to all watches and warnings and take them all seriously. Uh, I'll be here, here, you know, every step of the way. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update. Wire Protect you before and after the storm.